more cleverly in human Noah, their problem, among others, was how to retain their identity through the restraints of city living, mechanized and brutalizing jobs, and fragmented families. The musical answer came in the form of swing, in which you have a highly arranged, precise music with only a few key men using their individuality to improvise. Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, and Theolonius Monk introduced bebop. Emphasis focused on long, snake-like melodies, small instrumental combinations, and changes or harmonies derived from Debussy and Ravel. Cymbals emphasized the second and fourth beats, thus freeing the rest of the drums for commentative playing. Bop also, among other things, was a revolt against the subservient Uncle Tom role given Negroes in the war effort and the entertainment world of that era. soft sounds and a highly arranged music using many devices from serious music of past days. The soloist based their styles to a great extent on stars of the Count Basie band of the swing era, especially Lester Perez Young. Cool jazz has been called by some an attempt to remove the Negro influence from jazz, because jazz is the one element in American life where whites must be humble to Negroes. Sun Ra, among other things, fuses the snake-like bebop melodies with colors of Duke Ellington and the experimental changes of Theolonius Monk. The Sun Ra says of his music that it is a portrayal of everything the Negro really was, is, and is going to be, with emphasis focused on the Negro's triumph over the demonic currents of his experience. You know, I'm interested in what's going to happen to jazz. John, aren't you? Yes, but... Alex, I've been thinking about something you said before. What's that, John? Well, look. Granted that the Negro is the fountainhead of jazz, isn't it possible that a white can be just as basic to jazz as a Negro? That's a fair question. Yes, it could be possible. But possible only when the whites have paid the price in suffering to be the Negro's equal. But we are your equal. What are you talking about? But you're not our equals in suffering. People just don't go out searching for suffering. How will we ever be your equals? Well, the first step will be to accept the Negro's tragic experience of reverence and humbleness. But we're individuals. 
Suppose we've got our own way to go. And that way is leading America nowhere but to death and doom. But the Negro's way of looking at life is offering hope to everybody. Certainly. Jazz is telling everybody's story. Why can't you accept it? Oh, wait a minute. That's outrageous. Outrageous, my eye. This joy and suffering in jazz has cut across many differences in people and has won many friends for us overseas. They really go wild over it in Europe, Asia, and South America. Do they? Do they now? I don't know about that. Then you must be pretty dumb. You know, it seems to me that jazz and Negro could win friends for this country more readily than the other things we're doing in the Cold War. Now, how can you be so illogical, Faye? Foreign policy is one thing. Jazz is another. But she's right, because people in foreign countries sense the warmth and beauty in American Negroes and jazz, while they distrust white Americans. I don't see it. But anyway, Faye said something earlier about being interested in what's going to happen to jazz. Would you tell me, Alex? Yes, jazz is dead. <laughs> well, if jazz is dead, then the Negro's dead, right? No, wrong. What do you mean, jazz is dead? Why, jazz is selling more records today than ever before. Why is jazz dead, Alex? Jazz is dead because the Negro needs more room to tell his story. But isn't jazz enough? Well, it should be, the way you guys have been talking about it. You know, there are limits. His story deserves more than just jazz, jazz, jazz. Jazz for all its power, beauty, and world dominance is too limiting. It's a genteel slavery. Slavery was over in 1863. Why don't you guys always keep crying the blues? Look, I'm sick and tired of hearing Negroes accused of crying the blues. This is nutty. Absolutely and positively nutty. I've given in to you on those other points, Alex, but not on this one. Why not? Oh, come on. Let's cool down, okay? Now, if the Negro won't need jazz, who will need it? American whites will need it in order to understand the suffering which is needed in order to try to become human. Well, in what way is jazz dead, though, Alex? Let me clarify. The jazz body is dead, but the spirit of jazz is alive. But why is the body dead? The body is dead because inherently the material of jazz does not allow for further growth. But what are these inherent reasons for the death of the jazz body? The inherent reasons for the death of jazz center around the restraining elements of jazz. The restraining elements of jazz are the form and the changes. If any attempts are made to develop the form and or the changes, the swing or the spirit of jazz is lost. Since the jazz body cannot grow, it can only repeat itself. In so doing, it is stagnant. In so doing, it is dead. The three reasons for the death of the jazz body are one, the changes cannot evolve and retain the form, two, the form cannot evolve and retain the swing, and three, both the changes and the form cannot evolve simultaneously and have jazz. In all three alternatives, we have no growth in jazz, and that is what I mean by the death of the jazz body. Jazz cannot grow because it was not meant to grow. Its dead body stands as a monument to the Negro, who was supposed to die in the American scheme of things. Any attempts to develop the form or changes of jazz gives us only a circular seesaw. A circular seesaw which leads America or the Negro nowhere. In a way, the strangling image of a futureless future has made the Negro a dead thing, too. The Negro can only become alive by the construction of America's future. Jazz is here for a long time, just like the Negro. See, 